got together um, <laughs> sometimes once a week, sometimes every other week, whenever the schedules would allow. And it was really exciting to be with a group of teachers that were willing to go above and beyond to not only meet the needs of their students with IEPs at Tier 1, but also in 2 and 3. Uh, tier 1 um, is general education with and without supports, and we are trying really hard to have the LRE where kids are in the gen ed setting, the least restrictive environment as much as possible. Because as they go up that tier, they're in more special ed settings or smaller intensive settings. And a lot of the students that we work with tend to be in a tier three. So they have very intensive instruction. We took the lowest of the low of the IEP kids and said, okay, what do we need to do with them? So we said, what are the critical skills? We spent a lot of time trying to figure out what those critical skills are. Because there's all these things from the Iowa core and you know um, the standard core and, and all the things that you have to consider. But what is it those skills that we need to focus on? And we had a lot of very good professional discussion very about, good. well, how can we say that this is more important than this? But the building blocks, we decided that we looked at what the students really needed based on the assessments that have been given some have all sorts of things, and we said, okay, these are the critical skills that we need to know, and then we had to decide how do we know if the students master the critical skills. So all that together took us most of the year. Yes, it did. As a matter of fact, we started right away on our groups. We gave them an assessment to see how they did, and so that we would have our baseline, and then we jumped in right away with both feet in, and just kind of started our groups. And the first one that we have is the reading skills. So when we thought about our students, what was going to help them become successful in the next following years of school? Um, we thought about fluency, decoding, literal recall, main idea, and sight words. So fluency, if they couldn't keep up with their classmates, if they couldn't read those words, then they were going to fall behind automatically. Uh, decoding of words, we wanted to make sure that they could decode those words to their fluency. The literal recall, could they pull straight out of the text exactly what they were supposed to get from that? So not asking them to, for any hidden meaning, just exactly what it said in the text. The main idea, that's where they had to really pull forth their brain power and really decide what does the author really want me to gain from this? And then their sight words. Um, if you don't know your sight words, you're going to struggle all the way through. So we thought sight words were pretty concrete and that they needed to know those. So we developed assessments in all those areas and we would start first with fluency with the kids. If they passed fluency, we would give them the decoding assessment. If they passed that one, we would keep moving. If they were at the bottom of the bottom in fluency, we would keep them there and work on them with that skill. And we tried at least once weekly, if mm -hmm. not twice. And as special education teachers, we would pull our time to pull them for that half an hour second. Then we went on to math. We did the same strategy with math. And we came up with place value, addition and subtraction with regrouping, along with all your other basic math facts, word problems, charts and graphs, and fractions. These are things that continue over the years, and they build upon each other. So it's like building a foundation of your house you don't have the foundation set right, the rest is going to crumble. So we thought of these things that they would need the most and build upon those. So we built the assessments for these and then tested the children and continued the cycle. How do we know if the skills improved? Well, this is the exciting part. We got baseline data through ITP, through NWEA, um, through the Iowa testing program. Oh, yeah. sorry. Map testing. Thank right. you. Maybe, maybe Map testing. Yes. It's yeah. yeah. I know. Thank That's you for okay. explaining the language. We did a lot of tests. Okay. Yeah. Big tests and little tests. And then we did the intervention. And we said, okay, what's a good way to teach this kid this? And with Kim and Joy and Crystal, they really used a lot of brain power to say, well, this works with this. What about this? And so there was all this brainstorming going on. And then each week we they come back with their little charts and how the kids did and we would look at how they answered the questions and we looked at how we could teach them better. And by golly, 
all of our interventions, we want to have some pretty good assessment results. I don't need a drum roll here. Look at this. This is great. Okay, so for reading, uh, we had 12 of the 15 students that we worked with gain at least one year of education during that time. So when you think about special ed students and how they struggle and how, you know, we just try to keep closing the gap, this year we really did close the gap for those kids. Um, 12 out of 15 is gigantic for us. Uh, math, we had 11 of the 15. So some examples of the scores, um, students had an NPR on the Iowa test of 22 grew to 34. And we had one grow from 22, an NPR of 22 to a 66. One with a seven to a 54. So those are huge results. Um, for math, we had a 48 to a 93 for NPR. We had a 31 to a 53, and we had a 56 to a 77. And that's just a sampling of what we could gain through this little small group instruction. Two of the schools really grasped this and took off, and both of those schools had results like this. Others, we didn't meet as often, um, didn't quite get the buy-in yet, but that's the exciting thing to me is the two that stuck it out and really bought in from day one. This team worked so hard. I mean, from day one, it looks easy that we have these five. We went through 10 different things, um, designed assessments that were too low for the kids, came back a week later, up the rigor, did all kinds of things. Um, but two of the schools have results like this. The others, we didn't even really look at the results that close because they didn't really follow through all the way to the end. But we fully uh, would like those schools to get going with that again next year while the two that did are planning to expand to more teams and more grade levels. How many more minutes a day did each one of those children get on instruction? We got 30 minutes more a week. More a week? Is what we did. 30 minutes of intense instruction. Um, this is where you're really struggling. So I'm going to give you 30 minutes. We did it in small groups, usually four students or under in our sections, which allowed us to be more precise in them and really find out where their struggles were. It says it gained one plus year, you know, so fourth and fifth grade. So in, uh, gained one year from what level? The level of the fourth graders you reading at a fifth grade level? Or? I had one student who went from a second grade level, okay. and um, he's a fifth grader, and he is now reading at a Okay. That's what I, mean. I don't know what level they're starting. What's your opinion? Yep. Um, our students were all very low. In order to be special ed, they have to be at least over a year behind. Over a year, okay. Yep. And so these students, I mean, for them to gain one year's growth, okay. is substantial. So <coughs> what type of conversations did you have with the kids in terms of monitoring their progress? Well, in my classroom, we always graph their progress together. So if we were working on sight words or story problems for math, we would say, give them the assessment, here you go, let's take this. Then we would always talk about it afterwards and then we would graph it. And they would see themselves accelerating up the graph. So in my classroom as well, um, I put up a chart in the whole classroom and if they top their <coughs> top score, they could put a post-it note up and see that bar grow. And so that was huge to them. They're like, I did it, I, I did it, I did it. And can I have a post-it note? I mean, they were so excited to see their own growth. It was just amazing to watch. We want to exit students um, from our program, and that's our end goal. And so we will do anything to get to that point.